Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! usually encounter when we talk about it and this would include first of all putting all putting only putting these grammar schools in poor areas in catchment areas that at the moment are very poorly served by good schools so by definition you'll be providing uh, I mean an infinitely superior education to those kids in those areas lucky enough to get into those schools but then we're back to winners or losers because for every grammar school you create that's three secondary moderns Unless there's a system of doing this, a way of doing this that I can't um, quite put my finger on. So that's, that's point number one. If, if, where are you now, like geographically? Are you, are you in an area with good catchment or bad catchment? Are you in a catchment area for good schools or are you not? It really is that simple. So if you're in, not in a catchment area for good schools, if you are not in an area where the property premium Theresa May talks about is very real, very, very real, you're not in an area where property prices are, reflect the fact that there's, they put it on estate agents things now. They actually, I'm telling you this, like you don't know already, they, they, they put, this is in the catchment area for St. Doris's, um, you know, and everyone knows that St. Doris's is the best school in the area. If I now build a grammar school in an area that is not got any good schools how long before property prices go up and maybe not this year or next year but the year after that by the time the kids in year seven they start in year seven today by the time they're in year 10 year seven is going to be full of middle class parents who've moved into the area and they've had a win-win situation because not only have they moved into the area but the full impact of the property price inflation hasn't kicked in yet so they've got a relatively cheap house in the catchment area for one of these new grammar schools and because they're middle class and sharp elbowed they're going to get their kid into it do you, you see what I mean? I, and I don't want to be insulting to people who cheer for grammar schools because they're sort of lazy and think that think that they'd benefit from it but I'm gonna have to be a little bit insulting the only way you get this policy passed people is by indulging their comfort with unfair advantages this is in many ways it sums up British politics at the moment people voting for unfair advantages without realizing they're not gonna get it people voting for un what do you like it's like tax when you talk about tax and you say should billionaires be paying more tax and you can convince the sort of lumpen proletariat that this is a bad idea especially if you've got almost every newspaper in the land doing your work for you no it definitely shouldn't be paying more tax oh no it's outrageous it's a tax on hard work it's a tax on aspiration oh no how much do you earn oh 25 grand a year R right okay so you're against millionaires paying more tax because you think it somehow would stop them working hard. It would be a tax on aspirate. Oh, right, okay. And deep, deep down, this is built on the belief that one day you might be earning that sort of money, which is never going to happen. Same with grammar school. 75% of us will not benefit from a grammar school. So by all the laws of logic and democracy and arithmetic, they should never, ever enjoy popular support in a country. But they do. Why? Because you are appealing to the worst of us. You are appealing to our attitude to unfair advantage and you can pretty much divide the world into people who like unfair advantages and people who don't and then you divide them again into people who think they're going to be on the right side of the unfair advantage and people who don't think they will and that's the only way that they get past these policies so i would benefit from more grammar schools probably because i'm a walking cliche i, I you know i'm a m middle class dad in a nice part of town with sharp elbows and, and a deep interest in my children's education. So we, we, we would go to the front of the queue. So why the hell am I opposed to it? Because I don't think people like me need any more help. I think, I think the people out there whose children are possessed of great potential but whose parents perhaps don't have the roadmap to get them through the education system are the ones whose society should help. This is, makes me what's called, of course, a champagne socialist because I think that people less fortunate than me and less fortunate than my children deserve more help than me and deserve more help than my children from society it makes me a terrible hippie an awful holier than thou uh, proselytizing champagne socialist can you believe it it's incredible isn't it and, and, and some of the people who call me that will be the people whose children I'm trying to help British politics in a nutshell
you're poor, you're undereducated, and you are stuck in life. I think people like you really need help, and that governments should actually move to do. Oh, you champagne socialist, patronising toff in your middle class suburb. In your no, no, no. I'm trying to help people like you. I, I want your children to be better educated than you are, because then they won't make the wrong choices and end up believing all the lies that you believe. Oh, yeah, typical lefty middle class. What's it? Woo. It's incredible. So I, I want your children to have more help than my children get, and I don't think grammar schools are the way to do it, because wherever you see grammar schools in Britain, they prevent social mobility and they entrench hierarchy. Is there any way, and if you can do this, you're a genius, I'll get you a job at the Department of Education. Can you envision a way in which you could build grammar schools, introduce grammar schools, have more grammar schools, in a way that would actually help the clever children of parents who currently couldn't get them into a private school or a grammar school or even a good school. Because the really depressing element of this, and this is something I'm going to say even though I probably get crossed off a few Christmas card lists among my own social circle. The really ugly thing about this is that... I'll tell you who really benefits from grammar schools. Parents who could afford to send their children to private school but actually manage through inveigling private tuition and knowing how the world works. They manage to get the double bubble of getting a private school quality education for free and saving and banking the money that they would have spent on the education to spend on setting them up on the housing ladder or uh, sorting them out through university. So what grammar schools do at the moment is ensure that 20, 30,000 pounds a year per child stays in the bank balance, stays in the bank account of mum and dad for five to eight years throughout that secondary school period of education. So not only do those kids emerge with uh, uh, better qualifications than they would have got at a comprehensive school or a secondary modern school or anywhere else except a private school, not only do they emerge with qualifications that stand comparison with their friends who went to private school, they've got 150 grand in the bank as well. And that's what I mean by people being persuaded to vote against their own interests. Because if you are, or you think you are, in favour of grammar schools, because you're a slightly sort of uh, daily maily, a sort of slightly UKIPy, just quite like the idea that this is a yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. That's what you're doing. You're saying to the people you hate, the educated middle class, well, why don't you keep that money, and why don't you get an education just as good as the one you were capable of paying for, and. Uh, and I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll consign my child to a lifetime of ignorance and indolence while just calling you a champagne socialist. That's, what, that's how we're going to play this. Man alive, it's water off a duck's back for me, but is that really what you want to do to your own kids? So, thank you. Um, is it Conrad that's pointed this out? I'll double check in a minute. You're right, I am effectively calling for means testing. That's the way you make it work. You means test. So you only get into grammar school if you can prove that parental income is below a certain level. Cue much wailing of gnashing and teeth from the middle classes, but I think we have to live with that, and that's why Theresa May will never do it. It's only a vote winner. <laughs> it's only a vote winner when it helps the people who've already got more help than anyone else in society. And so it seems to me, and I do feel very strongly about this, but I am, as ever, open to persuasion. Hannah is in Lewisham. Hannah, what would you like to say? Yeah, morning, James. Hello, Hannah. Uh, we don't got no social mobility. I mean, we're at an impact. Stick that on a t-shirt, Scott. <laughs> we don't got um, no social mobility, Anna. You're not. You are kidding. You are not. <laughs> Look, um, you know, I, I understand about your 75% and all that. You know, I, I mean, I understand it. But uh, it, uh, originally, we were supposed to have grammar, and then we were supposed to have technical schools, which never took off, from what I understand, the little that I've read around this subject. And I think... You know, why can't we say 50% working class and 50%? I mean, that would solve it, wouldn't well, that, it? Well, you mean means testing for 50%? I mean, you know, the middle classes take over wherever, you know. When How long they... would it take? If they, but I don't want to pick a place. You, you, you've got to do this because people won't get cross with you. Well, think of a place that, that for you is okay, synonymous okay. With, with poverty and, and, and underprivileged. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, can you say that again? Name a place, pick a place. If I said to you, the sort of, the, you know, the, the, the roughest part of town, what would you say? 
Um, well, at the moment, uh, Peckham hasn't actually trendified. Peckham. So, uh, but I don't know whether you're right or not, but for the sake of argument, Peckham is a is a toilet. It's an armpit. It's got schools <laughs> that, frankly, you wouldn't send your worst ch worst enemy to. I build a whopping, spanking, shiny new grammar school in Peckham. How long before the house prices go up? Um, well, no, look, I, I, I've just sort of said to you, you know, because you're looking for an answer, okay? And I think we need, at the same time as having the grammar schools back, and I, be, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm working class through and through. Um, I'm a socialist and I, I don't have any money for champagne, quite frankly. But you're a Vimto socialist. Another, I'm, sorry? You're a Vimto socialist. Vimto, I, I don't know what that means. Well, then you're not working class. <laughs> Uh, okay, all right. Um, <laughs> look, you know, I mean, our Michael Caines, our Richard Burtons, our Alan Bennett, our Alan Johnson, they all come from the grammar school. And these are the type of people we are stopping at the moment because everyone, but everyone is talking about the music industry flooded by middle class people, this industry flooded by middle, middle class people. I think... You know, I could be th talking through my hat. We, 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 we want the grammars back, but at the same time, get the technicals back, which never took off, and have the comprehensive. And, uh, and, uh, and then, uh, okay, I, I mean, the, 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 the point you make is the point people often make. Here's an example of someone who did very well because of the grammar school system. Um, well, now can we talk about the, 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 the other 75 kids who did demonstrably worse than they would have done educationally because they got sent to a secondary modern? But you're right, there may be something in the idea of providing um, uh, technical technical colleges or whatever the modern equivalent will be. This piece by Tim Montgomery in the Times, I heartily recommend it. There's a paywall on the Times, so I can't tweet you the link. But he talks about inner city locations, tutor-proof testing, and entry at any age up to 16. Unfortunately, and, and unlike him actually, he then gets a little bit tribal and talks about disarming the left of all their old arguments, which you could also say is because the left are right and all their arguments are true, here are some ideas that might help us address those arguments, so you're disarming the left of all their old arguments is a way of saying the left the right. So, inner city locations, how long before the property prices go up? Tutor-proof testing. Anyone want to have a crack at telling me what that would look like? Tutor-proof testing. So, some way of testing children that does not in any way reflect the education they've already received. See, first year you put that test out, Someone gets hold of the paper, next year there'll be some kids sitting here who've practised and some kids who haven't. They've already, I don't know how you do that. And then entry at any age up to 16, that's relatively straightforward from the outside, but for people who've run schools, I suspect it's slightly more complicated. Paul is in Isleworth. Paul, what would you like to say? Good morning, Paul. Oh, good morning, James, sorry. That's all right, um, Paul. Be, be, gent be gentle with me. Of course I, I will. I've got for this. Okay, my daughter went to a, uh, we live in Isleworth, a uh, normal family, working family. My daughter went to a um, grammar school in Kingston. So the first point is, they have to have house prices, be in the house which is in an expensive area to go to a grammar school. No, but your daughter has to travel just under 10 miles, just well, just, just, right. just north of 15 miles a day there and back. That's right, yeah. that's right. Uh, and we, and which again is an advice, which is a sign of a privileged background. How is that? Well, I... I, I catch a bus and a... Catch a bus and a tube. Not just the journey. The fact that her parents knew that they could send her to a grammar school eight miles away is a sign of privilege. Not... Well, I mean, in that way, yes, because we had to put her through... Is it Tiffin? The, we had to put... Yeah, Tiffin Girls School. Yeah, it's we had a brilliant to through, school. Obviously, of course. Uh, and um, we had to put her through all the tuition and stuff, which obviously takes money and... Uh, more privilege. Um, you know, I, that's right. That's right. But... But... The second part... Second part of the, my answer was... Um, so Isleworth's not exactly the ghetto either. It's quite, it's, you know, it's got some lovely parts of it. Isleworth. Have you been? Have you been down to where the uh, rugby ground is? And opposite there. I have. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. You know, that's it's, not the most salubrious area, area, but the old Isleworth and and down by the river, it's got some lovely bits. Of course, every every area has. Every well, you area. see, again, it doesn't. You see, there'll be people listening to this who can't think of any redeeming features about the area they live in, and they'll be even further away from grammar schools than you are. Ah, uh, well, perhaps they have closed eyes and they should open. Them. <laughs> uh, now, but the second part of this, why can't the, you know, the special test, special uh, tuition that all the kids have to go through to get into into these grammar schools? Yes. Okay. Why can't they just have testing at normal and have a hybrid system so that you have entry at 11 and 13? So anyone, doesn't matter, regardless of whether their background, whether, whether, whether mil their parents are millionaires or are scraping by on £10,000 a year, they all do the same test at, te at, ele at 10. What would that test look like? Well, based on what they're doing at school. But then, 
It's not fair. At the moment, the tests are nothing like what they do at school, so you have to have that tuition. Yeah, but the, the, then, then the kids who are at good primary schools have got a massive head start on the kids who aren't at good primary schools. But this, but this is the whole point of having the grammar schools. We had no grammar schools for how many? 30 years now, new ones, yeah? Okay, and the standards have fallen. They haven't fallen. Well, I, I look. I look at. I but look overall, at my... they haven't fallen. What what you may be able to find, if you dig deep enough into the data, you might be able to find that that, that children from poorer backgrounds who had. Um, access to grammar schools have as a section of society done worse, but the overall population would have done better. Well, I, I'm, I'm not into stats and stuff like that, you know, I'm just... Gonna, yes, you are. Of course you're into stats, otherwise you wouldn't have worked out where the best school in your area was that your child could get to and calculated that an eight-mile journey there and an eight-mile journey back every day would be actually conducive to her receiving a superior education than she could have received anywhere nearer. Those are all statistics. Think, well, what we looked at was what the schools in Hounslow were like. And there wasn't a single school in Hounslow, with respect to all the schools in Hounslow, that we could we wanted to send it to because. Uh, yes, but this is all this. I don't. I don't. I mean, you're, you're, because my children will also be looking at schools in Hounslow, and and I will like you be privileged enough to look further afield. I'm asking how we help the children who don't have dads like you and me. Well, the, that's the highest whole thing you have. This with the greatest of respect, you don't, you don't care, do you? Of course it is, James. No, you, you don't. We offered, we offered, we offered, my, I offered, and you can... There's no reason why you should, it wasn't an insult. I mean, you just said, all the schools in Hounslow you don't want your daughter to go to, so what, what about all the kids who do go to them? Who's looking out for them? How is the system that you are currently benefiting from, or how would building more grammar schools help them? Well, the t hopefully bring all the standards up, that's the idea. Well, you hopefully bring all the standards up, mate. Come on. John's in Amersham. John, what would you like to say? Oh, good morning, James. Hello, mate. Um, I live in Buckinghamshire, which I'm sure you know still runs the grammar school or secondary scheme for the most of the county. Um, all children are offered the opportunity at age 11 to sit the test. If a child passes that test, they are automatically God, offered... We're going we're, we're to run out of time. We, I know how the system works. How does it help the children with great potential but feckless parents or parents who simply can't afford to find out or pay for tuition and help? Well, it, well, the, well the, the answer to that is you're going to your local primary school. The school will help you, presumably, in preparing as best they are allowed to for that test. No, but one in four children, one in, four children in, in state primary schools now receive um, private tuition and that figure goes through the roof in areas like yours where there are grammar schools. So how do you help the kids who are clever? At, your children are at grammar school, I presume. Oh, well, they've, they've been and passed. But my eldest son went to a, the secondary school, got his GCSEs and was transferred out to the grammar school because obviously they felt he'd be better suited at 16. Great. So, so the, the, the children who are cleverer than your son, even cleverer than your son, but have yep. got very, very little parental interest in their education, how do we help them? What's the best way to help them? How do we help them by building more grammar schools that they could never get into? Yeah, yeah okay. All right, I, I take the point, and I'm, I must admit, I hadn't thought that way along. Well, I was trying to say that secondary modern and grammar schools do work um, and they do if they've got dads like you, and this is the whole this is the whole point of the argument, isn't it? The, 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 what Theresa May is trying to sell us is part of her social mobility ticket. This is where I began by saying I just don't know whether I believe her or not. I know all the arguments. You know all the arguments, John. We've heard all the arguments a million different ways, uh, upwards, downwards, backwards, forwards. We know all of the arguments. But Theresa May says that she wants to help social mobility. First thing she did was axe the sugar tax, which will shorten the lives and compromise the health of poor children more than it will middle class children. Second. Thing she's done is say she wants to bring back more grammar schools, which the system suggests, as it stands, is great news for sharp elbowed middle class parents who will now be able to send their kid off to get an education as good as a private education without having to pay for it. So not only do they get the education for free, they get to keep the money they would have spent on it in the first place. Champagne socialists, don't they make you sick? The, 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 the argument, as often happens when things are typified as left versus right, the argument is a lot more complicated than that. And I've just realised another wrinkle in this. Um, grammar school's back on the agenda, which I suppose, given the mad rush back towards the 1950s that certain elements of the country seem to be embarked upon at the moment, shouldn't be a big surprise. But they tried to turn it into an argument about selection. Academic selection is good versus academic selection is bad. Now... 
I am in favour of academic selection. I've got no problem at all with that proposal or that notion, and I always use the example of a running race to explain my position. And grammar schools, as a policy, as a political football, are not actually about academic selection. Academic selection is about identifying the cleverest kids and giving them a tailored education as a result. You should also, in an ideal world, be giving the kids who haven't got over the bar a tailored education as well, i.e. the education that best suits their abilities. It's a lot of research and a lot of evidence suggesting that it, it, it doesn't actually work, that schools that treat, treat everybody equal ability are better. But I am who I am. I'll tell you what I feel because otherwise I couldn't sit here every morning and ask you to tell me what you feel. I just feel it makes sense intuitively to me to have academic selection. So when these politicians start banging on about academic selection, all these lefties who went to Oxford and went to grammar schools now saying academic selection is bad, they're not saying academic selection is bad. They're saying social engineering is bad. Because unless you can show me how a grammar school can actively and actually find the clever kids without the parents doing everything they can to get the best education available for their children, unless you can show me how that happens, then it's not academic selection. It's entrenchment of privilege. I've already got a dad, I've already got a mum who knows the uh, school 10 miles away that I can get into if I pass the right exam and I've got a tutor to teach my child to pass that exam and I de 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 you don't need any more help. If you don't get into the school you'll be gutted, I get that, but you'll be alright because of the background you come from. A child over there who is demonstrably cleverer, maybe they went to the same state primary school and in year 5, year 4, they were doing better. By the time they got towards the end of year six, they'd been left behind because everybody else in the class was getting private lessons. How do you get that kid there, the one who's just been left behind, despite being cleverer than all the others, how do you get him into a grammar school? How do you get her into... It's not academic selection, is it? Because she's cleverer, but she's not going to get in. Because her mum doesn't know about the system, and her dad doesn't know about private tuition, and even if they did, they couldn't afford it. And that's... That's it for me. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Michelle's in Orpington. Michelle, what have you got? Hello, James. Hello, Michelle. <laughs> well, um, I was listening to all of this, and Good. Um, I've been left, and I've been right, um, and I've been left again have doing you, the okey uh, almost. Well, now we're stuck in the middle with you. <laughs> so we're now stuck in the middle. Well, my my daughter has just started at grammar school. She's um, we are in Orpington, so she's just started at Newstead. Uh, which is a, a highly selective school. And when when we first moved into the area, me and my husband just had a flat age, then got together and we bought a house. But we bought it before sort of all the all the um, prices were shot up. And our daughter was only a baby, and we moved it because we liked the house. We didn't know any. We, we didn't know what schools were in the area. I didn't even know what grammar schools were. And. Um, and I have, I stayed at home because I've got a long-term medical condition. My husband's got a, you know, a fairly mediocre job, so we don't earn a lot. And she's grown up, just been quite bright. And I, she said, she said, I, I just want to go for the test. So we said, oh, go on then. And she, she went on the internet and found out what sort of tests they were doing. And uh, then she went in a hot lunch time in year six and sort of practiced a few. Wow. And then she passed, and that was it. And we thought, well, oh, blimey, perhaps we should have pushed her a bit more. No, it sounds you know, to me like uh, she's doing everything. I mean, she, she yeah, sounds absolutely yeah. wonderful, actually, Michelle. I, mean, she, I bet you're she's, proud she's as punch, great, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, she she's she helps with me. She's She helps me around the house when I can't. Oh. So she's, she's pretty special, I, th I think so, anyway. Um, so, you know, the, I think the grammar school, it was perfect for families like us, because we can afford tuition, you know, we've never had holiday abroad with them. And, and, and this is where I do that really annoying thing by bringing facts, by bringing stats into it, because your daughter is part of a 10% in Kent phenomenon. So, uh, yeah. we, we, like, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I mean, I'm, I'm uncomfortable, you listen to the programme, Michelle, I'm uncomfortable with the, with, the, with the phrases and the language, I don't know what phrases to use, but should we say working class to describe your background uh, or not? Are you comfortable well, with well, In fact, one of the school mums this week called Be Common, but she sort of meant it in a nice way. There is, no, she um, didn't. <laughs> Well, I took it in a nice way. Well, that, that, so that, that's because you're nice. It, it doesn't mean she meant it in a nice way. Well, oh, that makes my blood boil, that sort of thing. But, but the, 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 the deal is, the girls from your daughter's background have a 10% chance of getting into a grammar school in yeah. Kent. 
girls from a middle class background have a 50% chance. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I wish somehow, and I don't know how we could do it, your, your, your daughter must be exceptional. She must be better yeah. than a lot of the kids uh, in no. her class who had the no, tuition. I the thing is, she's not a tuition, but I've never gone back to work because I've not been well enough. But we do listen to LBC. She she knows who you are. Blimey. And, um, it was all going so well, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> she, she loves Mystery Hour. Oh, and, bless her. No, I'm at home and we talk and we listen. And she's she's into politics already. So hopefully, you know, we might not be able to sort it out now, but give her a few years. No, she, she, she's, she's a winner and she's going places. And, yeah. and, and she's going to go even further as a result of getting into a grammar school than she would have done. But for me, the idea of bringing in more when there's only a 10% chance of a girl like her getting in and a 50% chance of a, of a well, yeah. let, let's put, call a spade a spade. I'm middle class. My daughter would have a 50% chance of getting into a, a grammar school if we lived in Kent. Yeah. Your, yours would have a 10% chance. And that's not right. And that is not an no. argument to build more, is it? Yeah, it, well, if there's more, then then there's more. I mean, yes. that, that's got to be a good thing. Um, and then just h hopefully, house prices, something's got to happen with the houses. Something's got to happen. I feel that that's, that's where... It's gone nuts. What if I built a grammar school in an area that yeah. currently has no good schools? How long would it take before the house prices went up, do you think? Well, yeah, and it's just, just generally, house prices, it's just ridiculous. It, you know, everybody... I mean, years ago, in the 80s, before the houses shot up, you know, if you were working class, you, you know, he was a dustman, she was a cleaner. Yeah. You could still have a little holiday, you could still run a little car, and you could still have a little two up, two you down. You could go on the property ladder. Now, we, yeah. we, we spoke last week to teachers who can't afford to go on the property ladder. No, and I mean, that's that's not right. And, you know, you want a, you want a home to, to bring up your children. You, 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 want it, you want to own it because... A little kingdom, isn't it? You know. Yeah. No. I, I get all of that, and, and that's one of the great mysteries of our time. Is is is, is quite what's going to happen to bring some sort of reality back to back to the system. But I love, I love, I love your story. I can't wait. What's your? Could, will you give my love to your little girl, Michelle? Will you tell her how proud I am that she listens to the Can program? You, I, I tell you what, my mum loves you as well. I'll leave it out, will you? <laughs> <laughs> you got three. Sorry, I'm snorting on the radio. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You've got three generations, so oh, that's, there you that's go. Really, thank you, Michelle. That's lovely. And it is, I guess, in a sense, an almost irresistible point that Michelle makes. Okay, it's not fair, but if you build more of them, then even if they've only got a 10% chance, it, there'll still be more of them getting into these schools. But my, I, and this is actually where it does become a bit left, right? It's why Michelle referred to a hokey cokeying. Because, yeah, all right, so you build more grammar schools because the more there are, that 10% stays 10%, but there'll just be more people in it, if you see what I mean. It's uh, the, because the 100% gets bigger. You move up from 1,000 kids to 10,000 kids. It's still only 10% from poorer backgrounds that get in. And that's a reason to do it, because you'll be helping more. Yeah, but you're then giving the 50% from a middle-class background. <laughs> You're giving them a bonus, and society is paying for it. And and all the parents who pay tax without ever, ever knowing or dreaming of getting their kid into grammar school are paying for the education of the kids whose parents could afford to send them privately. It's, it's such a wrinkly subject, this. It's such a conflict between principle and practice, between sort of a, a theory, if you will, and, and actuality. And yet, you can't quite shake the notion that a system that even lets a few kids from humble backgrounds get a seat at the educational top table is better than a system that doesn't let any of them. Cherie is in Kingston, appropriately enough. What would you like to say, Cherie? Hi, Cherie. Whoa. Let's try that hello? again. Cherie, hello. What would you like to say? Hello. Hi hello. there, hello. Um, James. Um, yeah, what I wanted to say was um, in just reference to what you mentioned about building more um, grammar schools in the, let's say, less affluent areas. Yes. So one of your callers before said Peckham, for example. Yeah, that's and not gone down very well. I think we need to invent We need to invent a new a new borough. Let's call it Grotsville, all right? So we're building a, okay. we're building a grammar yeah. school in Grotsville. Yeah, okay. And... Um, if they're going to build them, then for me, it makes more sense to build them in those sorts of areas, as you said, to give children from poorer backgrounds, you know, a chance of a better yes. education that they're currently receiving. And yeah, okay, house prices might go up, but for me, isn't that the lesser of two evils for house prices to go up, but the children living there are getting the chance of a better education? Yes, um, for, 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 for one generation or for, for one intake, but how long would it take before prices went up? 
And then the next, yeah. and then then you sell, and then people move out, and people pile in. People like me pile. Well, actually, we didn't move for schools. Funnily enough, we just moved because we couldn't afford to stay where we were, and we needed a bigger house. But the uh, but the people pile in and pay the extra premium because the school is there. Yeah, but then at the same time, then I feel like. The people that are living in, in what was the area you said? Grotsville? Grotsville, okay. Grotsville yes, Grotsville, the Royal Borough. Yeah, the people living in that place, for example, they can't afford to buy their houses. So, I, for me, if I lived there and I couldn't afford to buy a house there and it was going to be a very, very long term goal, I'd rather my child go into a very good school, getting a great education, yeah, a better chance of getting a good job, and being able to afford to buy a house in the future and having the um, opportunities that I hadn't, I hadn't got. And okay, and a lot of you said, oh, you know, there'll be an influx of people coming in, but that would be over a longer period of time. And over that time, then, you know. Well, there you go. So here's two things you could do. You could have means testing for the school, although that would go down like a bucket of cold sick at Conservative Party conference. Or you only build grammar schools in the parts of the country that have by far the highest percentage of social housing. And then, then, and you're not allowed to sell the social housing either. So that, that, there are things you could do, but that looks even more like social engineering. It's funny how social engineering is a good or a bad thing, depending on whether or not you're on the receiving end of the benefits or not. Uh, Ch Sherry, thank you. I'm you're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. It's it's a conversation about grammar schools. Yawn, but it's actually a, an original angle that is probably the most important angle to contemplate if Theresa May truly does mean to press ahead with lifting the ban on opening new ones. I think she probably does. I don't think it's going to help the people she says it's meant to help. I think it's going to help the people she generally enjoys the political support of. The, the sort of aspirational, or not even aspirational, but the, the, the middle class who are comfortable with unfair advantage and want more of it, please. So she'll pretend it's a policy to help poor kids, but unless we can come up with a way to ensure that poor kids get first dibs on the places, it will end up helping the kids from wealthier backgrounds. This is really powerful from Mike in Greenford. I was unaware that I had taken the 11 plus in the 50s, James, until my parents were told I should go to a grammar school. When we were joined later on by pupils from the local secondary modern school, they proved to be in the top tier of my school. This is the sort of later entrance from the secondary modern who got promoted to the grammar. At the time, I wondered how many of their fellows at the secondary modern would also be equal to us. And I've since realized that the overlap's probably about 90%. So a bad day or how the dice fall could have blighted many lives almost at random. And that's the traditional opposition to the system. The old system, when there were loads of them, not the new system, when they're as rare as hen's teeth. Is that, imagine if you missed out by one place. Did you hear the earlier caller describing how even now, years later, he, he could tell you, I missed out by a couple of points. And, and that will be not all 75% of the people who don't get in, but let's say 10% of them, so from 65% to 75%, all and are they really demonstrably, academically less gifted than the 75 to 85%? It's just not true, is it? Are, you gonna, are we going to get the same result? If we test 100 people in a similar way for 100 days, are they going to come in the same order every day? And yet somehow it, 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 appe it appeals to voters who can be satisfied, successfully persuaded that they're going to be on the right side of the unfair advantage. And I don't know, sometimes I wonder whether I'm wasting my breath because you just see it happening again and again and again in Britain at the moment. Are you in favour of austerity? Yes, I am, definitely. Far too many people taking far too many liberties. Yeah, do you think austerity is going to affect you? Absolutely not. No, I'm a hard-working... Uh, come back a year later, how are you getting on with that austerity? Well, my local council's had all its budgets cut by a third. They're not taking my bins away anymore. Schools are looking rubbish. I, I didn't know it was going to affect me, yeah, but you voted for it. John's in Croydon. John, what would you like to say? Yeah, good morning, James. Um, well, clear an interest. I have, both my sons went to grammar schools in Sutton, which is one of the places that had grammar schools. Um, I don't live anywhere near Sutton, really, and they had. I mean, it, it, so this thing about house prices going up isn't necessarily true. I mean, no, no, it is. You're just the exception that proves the rule. Well, no, no, it's not because, in well, fact, the, no, no, it the, is. Well, no, <laughs> well, the school is maybe the exception that pr proves the rules Maybe. So consequently should should be because not put it this way one of them uh, i know of at least two boys who uh, one came from rygate and went to sutton um every day another one went f from brixton down to sutton how, how many boys are in the school um, uh, about 700 but i don't know how many okay. you know that, but that was just but we know of two who came from far away that no, that was just in his class yes so you know class it, was, of it was a it was a wide 
30. 30, so two out of 30. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, and that was a, but the, the catchment area, they, the, the ethos of the school was if you pass the test, you will get a place. And people came from North London, they came from all over the place. And they had, they had two things in common. Them. They had two things in common. They had been prepared for the test, and they had parents no. who were sufficiently engaged with the system to even know that this opportunity existed. Well, one, my, neither of my sons had tutors. No, I didn't say so tutors. I said they prepared, prepared for the, prepared they, the they, they knew they were taking a test, right? They knew they were taking a test, yeah. And, and some effort was put into finding out what the test might look like so that they didn't turn up speaking the wrong language or answering the wrong questions. No. No, you just sent them up. They, 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 they woke up in the morning and said, oh, you go, you're going to Sutton today to take a test. No, no, no. no. I, I said they, there are several schools around. They went to tests on several schools in the area. So in they the were prepared to take the test. The schools. They were prepared to take a test. Yes. But the test, no. Um, secondly, I was also a victim when I was much younger of the whole thing of grammar schools and I failed totally with the 11 plus I didn't even get into a technical school which were around when I was young and it changed my life totally um, you know if I you'd sat the test on a different day do you think you might have passed um, not at the time because one of the things which um, affected my education was one of the things that you love about the old uh, hero, Mr. Gove. In that I went. He's not to really my hero. <laughs> well, okay, okay, fair enough. Um, I went to various schools because of my father's work, and at the time there was no national curriculum, so I went to various schools when I was young, and they were all teaching different things. So I had no chance whatsoever. Of, you know, you'd hear, for example, you'd get Romans or something in history and then discover that somebody else was doing World War II or something like that in history. Or different, you know, so there was no national curriculum at that time. Um, but I still think that there is a small but um, essential part to have schools which are academic. I will agree with that. Whether you should reintroduce... John, very briefly, I've got, I've, got, I've, got, I've got a full switchboard. What's the point you rang in to make in a sentence? Um, well, the, one of the points I made... To no, just, just the main uh, point you rang in to make, if you could. OK, that the school where my, both my sons went, me, the head teacher knew nothing about the local grammar school. Uh, yeah, the primary school. So when I said right at the outset that the privilege your children enjoyed was the fact that their parents were engaged with the system to a degree that meant you knew about the opportunities available, every other kid in your children's primary school was not enjoying that privilege unless they had a parent like you. I wish we could probably do it shorter next time. Purdeep's in Bromley. Purdeep, what would you like to say? Um, hello, James. I'd like to say that um, I went to a primary state school and I failed my 11 plus by a handful of points. My parents appealed, but the appeal wasn't successful. Um, but they let us be children. They let us play on the street outside our house. They let us, you know, do everything that children want to do. They didn't push us academically at that age. Um, whereas the friends of mine who did pass their 11 plus, including my neighbour who lived directly next door, next door to us um, her parents were preparing her I knew that she was sitting and doing tests while I was playing outside on the street with my friends And but in the long term I don't think I've done worse than the children who pass their 11 plus academically um, in fact I probably have done better than them and it was no reflection on my intelligence no, but you're comparing but yourself to them you're not comparing yourself to the you who went to grammar school well I don't think I well, I may have been academically more successful in a grammar school. I don't know, but... But that, that, that's the false that. equivalence in so many of these debates, in that I don't know who... I mean, I went to public school, but I, yeah. I can't compare myself to me who went to a, to a, no, to, to a failing secondary modern school. God knows how I would have turned out, no, but... No, I it, can't argue with that. Another point I'd like to make, though, is in Bexley, in Kent, where there are lots of grammar schools, I think the state schools generally aren't very strong. But if you go to Bromley where there aren't any grammar schools, the state schools tend to be very good. So I think there is something to be said about, you know, you create these secondary moderns and then everyone else suffers as a result. Well, that's the beauty of this. So the headlines, where's the Telegraph today? It's a stop school selection by house price, says May. PM in call for new grammars. But of course it doesn't say PM in call for new secondary moderns. That's it.
<laughs> it, ne it never says. What we need in this country, we need 75% of our children to be going to secondary moderns. They just say, we need 25, we need grammar school, more grammar, and everyone thinks they're going to win. Everyone thinks they're going to cross the line. Yeah, I'm just going to read this out, actually. I just wanted to say that for me, you have hit the nail on the head with everything you say. I need more text like this. Why don't you go into politics? Plus, you have a very soothing voice. This is from Kay in Ballam. Clearly a Kay of impeccable, impeccable tastes. When my 11-year-old first started primary school, I was oblivious to so much. And by the time I'd wised up, it was she was in year three, and it was too late. I felt I'd already missed the boat. I'm not going to read it all, but the points you make are what I worry about, is that the kids who get left behind are the kids who need the most help. Len's in Sutton. Last word to you on this, Len. Can you keep it quite brief? <laughs> yeah, I can Only because of the brief. news, Len. It's nothing personal. <laughs> it's, it's not a problem at all. I have, I've got three children. One of them is a foster child. Uh, I've had one in each. I live in Sutton. Used to live in Croydon. Constantly the bane of people in Sutton's lives and of people from outside the area who come and take the grammar school places. Of course. The way Sutton works, you pass, you, you take the exam, you get a grade. If you pass the grade, then you're eligible for the grammar school, but they take the top few and they will take from anywhere. Now, my young foster lad, he passed the test and he just passed it. Right. And he never qualified for the grammar school. Ah, because they cream off the cream of the cream. And, and uh, you might... Oh, that stinks. And that's the point, isn't it? Is that we all sit here thinking grammar schools are great because we will benefit from them, but 75% of us will not. 75% of our children will not. And when Len tells you that lad who clearly needs more of a leg up in life than the rest of us do, than the average middle class kid does, just by dint of being fostered, loses out under that system.